Tom's great plan was to go to the church, listen to people pray for them at the funeral, and appear at the most important moment. The three boys had crossed the river in the darkness of night and had stayed in the forest until the sun rose. They had entered the church and slept there for some time. Tom became very famous all over the village. He was proud of being a pirate. Aunt Polly and Mary made good food for Tom. They listened to Tom all morning about what had happened on the island. They laughed while he told stories about their days on the island. Finally, Aunt Polly said to Tom, Now we can laugh. We can be happy. But why didn't you come directly home? Why did you go to the church instead? That's why I can never understand you. Why couldn't you come across the river to tell me that you were not really dead? Yes, he could have done it, said Mary. If you had thought of it, you could have done it. Why did you let me suffer all this time, said Aunt Polly. Tom is always in a hurry, Mary said. Sometimes he doesn't think about other people. Sid would have told me he was okay, Aunt Polly said. He cares about me. Why don't you care about me, Tom? I do, Aunt Polly, Tom said. I had a wonderful dream about you while I was away. Did you? Yes, I dreamed you were sitting in the living room. Mary and Sid were sitting beside you and somebody else. Yes, go on. Who else was here? I think, yes, it was Joe's mother, Miss Harper, and you were both crying. She was here one night, Tom. What else did you dream? I don't know. I can't remember. Think, Tom. Try to remember. I think you said something about a wind. Then you told Sid to close the door. Well, yes I did. Aunt Polly was surprised. Then you and Miss Harper were talking about us. You said we were good boys, really. Miss Harper said the same thing. Yes, she did, Aunt Polly said. And you told her the story about the cat when it drank some painkiller. Yes, I did. Aunt Polly was very excited now. And you talked about having the funeral on Sunday. Yes, we did. Aunt Polly said, Is that all, Tom? Did you dream any more? Miss Harper wasn't here. You were kneeling beside your bed, praying, and you were crying. Oh, Tom, I never believed you were dead. And then you went to bed. When you were sleeping, I left a letter for you. It was on a piece of wood. On it were the words, We are not dead. We are alive on the island as pirates. Then I went away. Oh, Tom, Aunt Polly hugged him again. You really do care about me. It was only a dream, Sid said. Oh, be quiet, Sid. Aunt Polly gave Tom a big apple and sent the children to school. Tom walked slowly and proudly to school. He felt that everybody was watching him. Younger boys followed him, proud to be seen near him. Boys of his own age tried not to show that they knew he had been away, but they were all jealous. They wished they could be as famous as Tom. At school, everyone wanted to hear about the boys' adventures. Tom and Joe told stories about their life on the island to other children. Tom was no longer interested in Becky Thatcher. Being famous was enough to please him. When Becky came to school, Tom tried not to see her. She came near Tom and looked at him, but Tom turned and began to talk with Amy Lawrence. She said to one of her friends, Mary, where were you yesterday? I wanted to tell you about the picnic. What picnic? Mary asked. My mother is going to let me have one. Can I come? Mary said. 
I can ask whoever I want, Becky said. I want you and all my friends to come. She looked over at Tom, but he was still talking to Amy Lawrence. Now the others asked Becky if they could come to the picnic, and she invited all of them except Tom and Amy. Tom turned away. Becky's legs were shaking, and she walked away with tears in her eyes. She didn't want her friends to see her crying. What was she going to do? Then she thought of a plan. The next time Tom saw her, she was with another boy, Alfred Temple. They were sitting beside each other, looking at a book. Now Tom stopped talking with Amy. He left her and went to look again at Becky and Alfred Temple. Becky pretended she didn't see Tom, but she saw him, and she was happy because Tom was suffering. Tom became very angry. That Alfred Temple, he thought, I will catch him. He began hitting the air with his fists, as if striking the other boy. That afternoon, Alfred followed Becky out of the school, but she said, "Go away! I never want to see you again." Alfred knew what was wrong. Becky was just using him to get Tom's attention. He went into the classroom and found one of Tom's books. He opened it to the page they were supposed to study that afternoon, and tore it in half. The teacher would think that Tom had ruined his own book. Becky, looking in the window, saw Alfred tear the book. She knew she should tell Tom about what Alfred had done, but decided not to. She would let the schoolteacher beat Tom for destroying a page in his book.